All right, so I'm going to take this first this context plan and just drag it into Illustrator. When it first opens, you're going to be zoomed into a weird place. And I just want you to click on the window and then use Control or Command minus to zoom out. You're going to keep pressing that until you can see your um, rectangle and your square. You might be wondering what happened to the image that was here. Well, you didn't actually export the image. All you did was export the bounding boxes of it. So I'm going to show you how to re-add that in Illustrator um, very quickly. So first, use a selecting window to select both of these objects. And um, when everything is selected, use Control or Command G to group them. Now these are a group. Now, if your workspace doesn't look like mine, um, go up to Window and Workspace and choose Typography. Uh, this is a workspace I usually use to make sure that I have access to the tools that I'm used to using. You might have yours set up a little bit differently, or it might just be on the defaults. But either way, if yours doesn't look like mine right now, just go to Workspace, Window, Workspace, and Typography. So now with this, uh, these two objects selected as a group, we're going to use these alignment tools. And these alignment tools will basically just shift everything so that it's in line with the center of this white square, um, which is called an artboard. So I've clicked this horizontal align and vertical align, and now this is perfectly centered in the middle of the artboard. But the artboard's not big enough to contain all of this information, and we need to change that. So what we'll do is click off of the um, selection, click on artboard, and make sure that you have your move copy artwork with artboard deselected. So if yours is highlighted like this, please go up and uncheck it. Make sure it's not highlighted. Then we're just going to drag the corners of this artboard so that we are a little bit outside the boundaries of the line of the image that we are going to add very soon. So we just want to be able to fit the information on the board. And I'm going to put a little extra space at the bottom so that we can put a scale bar and a north arrow. Um, when that's done, you can click back onto the selection tool or just press V. So you see that um, Illustrator has imported our layers, but it did not import the image. What we're going to do is ungroup this. You can right click and go ungroup. And now I'm just gonna actually drag the image in. Okay, so this comes in on the line work layer, which we don't want because it is an image. So to move something from one layer to another, you can just drag this little box into the other little box. It's a kind of a strange way to move layers around, but that's the way it's done in Illustrator. You can also select the layer you want to move it to, then right click, Go Arrange and Send to Current Layer. In this case, now we have it on the IMG layer, so everything should be fine. I will move this into place um, using the edges that we have exported from Rhino. So to resize this and to keep the correct image ratio, please press Shift while you're resizing. So Shift and then drag these corners. And then use Control or Command Plus to zoom into the image. We don't need any of these other lines right now, so I'm just gonna delete them. And for now, um, I'm going to actually make a duplicate of this image. So one way to do that is to press Control or Command C, and then Shift Control Alt V. That's gonna paste a copy in place. So if I drag this away, I can see that there's now two copies. Control Z will undo that. So I have two copies and you might be wondering why, but I have a plan. With this copy that's on top, I would like you to go to Object, Rasterize. And we're just gonna leave these settings as they are. Note that you only need to do this with the top layer image. So now with this top rasterized uh, layer selected, I would like you to go to Edit, and then go to Edit Colors, 
and convert to grayscale. It's going to take a little minute to do that. And now right click on the layer, go to arrange and send to back. Okay, now that's in the back. I want you to take this box and duplicate it. So again, you can use control or command C and then shift control alt V. If you uh, can't get that combination of um, buttons, you can also just go to edit and paste in place. So if we look in this layer now, we, have, we should have um, two paths that are the same. And I'm gonna ask you to just turn off one of them. Now with this bounding box selected, the second bounding box, and pressing shift, select the image behind it, right click and go make clipping mask. Now you see we have uh, a, just this square which is colored and this background image which is black and white. Um, that looks pretty good, but I think we should probably tone this down a little bit so that our, our site stands out a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn this down to 65, let's try 75. Okay, I'm gonna turn it down to 75. And now we see we can see a desaturated background context. So we still get the sort of impression of um, situating ourselves in the city, but we also have a focus on our site area. So it's really easy to see where we're studying. Now turn that other square back on and we're going to uh, give that a, a different color because I don't think aqua is really what I'm going for here. So in the swatches um, panel, and if you don't see swatches, just go up to window and make sure swatches is checked. You'll see that it comes with three panels and I'm gonna go into color. Now I could select a stroke color um, from this entire spectrum, but I'm just going to select white. And let's see if that did it, yep. But that's a little bit tough to see. So I think I'd like to increase the stroke and I'm gonna go with something like four. Yeah, why not four? Okay, so now we have a context image with our site highlighted and we have the bounding box clearly shown, but there is something that's missing from this map and that is some um, information to orient us and to give us some scale. So let's uh, create a new layer up here and you can do that by adding the plus button, create new layer. And I'm going to double click and just call it annotation. The ordering of layers is important in Illustrator. So um, think of this as working from back to front. We always want the things that are sitting on top of the background at the top of the layers panel. So the annotations are going to go on last. That makes sense. They're above the line work and the line work is above the images. So just um, click this layer to activate it. And now we're going to use Control or Command Plus to zoom in and then space bar and click over to pan. What can we do with this scale bar? Or rather, how could we create one of our own? I'm going to use the pen tool. So you can access the pen tool by clicking on this command, P, um, or just clicking P. So I'm gonna press P. And then you'll see up here that it will tell you what settings are active for the pen right now. And we have a white stroked line, which I think we would like to change. Um, so to change the stroke, you can double click on this little box down here. And I'm just gonna drag down to uh, the black corner here. You can tell it's black because the hex code has six zeros. Now we have our stroke color selected and the stroke is, I guess, taking from our previous selection. I'm just gonna move it down to three. And I'm gonna zoom in again um, a little bit more. And now I'm gonna actually kind of use this existing scale line from um, Google Earth to create a new one. So I will maybe just lock up those other layers just to make sure I don't um, snap or lock or uh, move them. And now clicking on the corners, and you can see that Illustrator kind of automatically snaps to orthographic grids. 
what I want to do is keep a close eye on the tooltip. Um, what I'm noticing right now is that it's measuring in pixels, which is not ideal because how will we know um, how to create a scale bar if it's in pixels? We exported our work in millimeters. So I'm going to escape that and um, I would like you guys to press Control or Command R. That's going to bring up your rulers. In, this, in the corner, we have a little orienting um, box here. And if you right click on it, you can change your units. I'm going to change it to millimeters because we exported it at scale in millimeters. And I'm just going to delete this line and draw a new one. So P for pen tool. Now we can see that our tooltips are coming up in millimeters. If we think about the scale of this scale bar, at one to 10,000, one kilometer should be 100 millimeters. And that's exactly what it is. Um, but scale bars are not really useful with just one point of reference. So I'm going to create a scale bar that goes to halfway point. So I'm gonna look for approximately 50 mils and make another point here. And then I'm gonna jog up and it's, Illustrator is gonna automatically match my point to the previous one that's here. So I'm going to match it there. And then I'm gonna do another halfway point. So I'm looking for about 25, that's good, down here. And then in this last sector, I'm going to split it into 15 and 10. So I'm gonna go 15 here and then just click till you get to 10. Good enough. Okay, you can press enter to end the command and then V to get back to your cursor. And I'm gonna just drag this down here. Um, let's add a little reference here. I'm gonna put one kilometer I'll leave it up to you to select your, your fonts and what you're going to use. And then um, I'm going to use, I'm going to press down Alt, which uh, gives me a little double arrow. And I'm going to drag this, pressing Alt and Shift together to keep it on the same plane. And double click in here and just put 500 meters. Okay, if you see a red box like this come up, it means that it hasn't contained all of the text in that box. So um, I accidentally pressed VV because I'm not smart. So that's what happened there. Okay, and then press Alt, get your double arrow, drag over, and we are going to make this one 100 meters. Of course, we also need a zero and we don't need a measurement for that. So, I would suggest you select everything here and control G or command G to group it. So now you have a group. Move that off to the side. Now, if somebody wanted to measure a part of your plan, they would have a good idea of how much is 100 meters, how much is 500 meters, and how much is an entire kilometer. Okay, we're gonna create a north arrow because the one that Google provides is quite hideous. So I think we should just draw a circle. Let's go to the ellipse tool here. I'm going to um, make sure that my fill and my stroke are switched here. So I don't want this to be a solid circle. I want it to be a stroked circle. So I'm going to switch the fill and the stroke just by clicking that arrow and activate the stroke so that it's on top by just clicking on this layer here. And now I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to click and use shift to constrain the ellipse so that it's um, a circle. So. Click and drag, pressing down shift, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to drag that circle down here. Maybe I'll center it with that. And then I am going to, again, use the pen tool. I'm going to go from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, and then I'm just going to press enter and close off the command. 
press V to get back to your cursor, and then um, I'm going to change the stroke to three. And now we have an architectural north arrow. This tick is basically enough to indicate that north is straight up. Um, a good rule of thumb is to orient your drawings so that they are orthogonally north. But there's times when that can't happen, in which case you would always make sure your north arrow is oriented according to where north is. So sometimes your drawing will be square, but north will be somewhere over there or somewhere elsewhere in the, um, in the direction zone. But in this case, it's facing straight up. So we're just gonna leave it there. And again, I'm gonna select those and group them. You can also access group by right clicking and going group. All right, so we have a skill bar, we have a north arrow, uh, we have a highlighted area in our context plan. Um, if you wanted to go further with this, there's lots of different things you could do. Um, just imagine what you could do with a circle. You could also add contextual names if you wanted to. For example, you could add a label that says the Strait of Georgia. Um, you could add Stanley Park. You could pinpoint maybe uh, different areas. So if I wanted to pinpoint something, I might um, select like a neat color that I like, maybe like tangerine orange. And I might say like, you know, Olympic Plaza. I could draw a little label here. Um, don't worry if that ever happens, just close off your command by pressing enter and then switch those. You can always select something and change its properties here in the uh, properties panels. So yeah, I could, I could add little labels and call outs saying uh, what other points of reference are around that people might know, um, but that's up to you. you. I'll let you take it away from here. So I think this should give you a pretty good idea about how to showcase your site in a context plan. And now all you'd really need to do from here is save it out as a PDF or a JPEG.